So clearly we can't solve all of the world's problems, but uh, what I want to do real quickly is just talk about some ideas I have for how Manchester United is going to line up with Cristiano Ronaldo in the side. Um, so I want to just dive straight into this. No, uh, no introduction, no anything. Like, here's a thought. So I, I've gotten a chance to watch Ronaldo quite a bit in these uh, in the Euros and then um, for Portugal and then a little bit for Juventus and just to sort of see like, okay, wait, where is he playing? Because Ronaldo's game has changed significantly since the last time he was at United. I mean, he left Manchester United as unarguably the best player in the world. Um, he comes back as arguably the best player ever. Um, I mean, he's in that category. You, He's one of the best athletes to ever play any sport ever. He's in the Jordan category for me. Um, and that's, I mean, he makes you believe, Ronaldo. That, that game, to break the record, you know, his two headers in the dying moments of that game against Ireland is, is to me, one of the most legendary moments I've seen in sports. I mean, it's just, his, it, there was a moment, and I think the, is like, the 80th minute or the 78th minute, you know, where he had, he, he clearly, he'd missed a penalty early in the game. He hadn't played particularly well, but Portugal had also not played particularly well. The forwards were misfiring. Um, Jota had missed some really clear opportunities. Bernardo Silva had been playing well, but had missed some clear opportunities. And there's just this moment where there was a, a, another missed opportunity, and the crosses were horrendous uh, in that game. They just were not getting the ball into the box well. I, how many times you can hit the first man with a corner? But Ronaldo looks at everybody and just starts doing this. He, you know, he, he encourages a, the, the player, I forget who it was, who'd missed a shot or had had a bad cross. And he just encourages him, puts his hands on his shoulder, and it's like, and then he gets to the crowd and he starts doing this. It's like, don't, don't quit. It's like he sensed that the team were getting complacent and it's like he just looked at them and said no this game is not over now he learned that from Ferguson um, but he, he 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 pumped them up he got them going and then look what he does like they finally got a decent ball into the box and Ronaldo was all over it world-class header into the corner I mean beat a great goalkeeper that little guy done phenomenal beats him you know ball comes in again and, and he puts it away and not only does Portugal pull back and tie it like they win it and he you know Ronaldo pulls his shirt off does his classic celebration. It's iconic. He's, he's an icon. He's a legend, Ronaldo. Um, but I was watching the way he played, and I was like, you know, R Ronaldo is just at a different level. He, he, the, the game looks so slow for him. Like, he, he's just... They talk about that in, in American football, you know, when, when there's players that are just at a different level, the game just seems to slow down. And the game feels really slow when Ronaldo has it. He's not slow, he's moving fast. It's just he's he's at a different plane and then the players around him. He's world class, Cristiano Ronaldo. And the thing that's interesting to me, there's no, no frantic, he's calm, he's very measured, he makes the right decision pretty much every time. You know, he's just he, he, he's he's a he's a complete footballer. And I, I think that one of the things that I've noticed about him is his his football intelligence of when to sit in the box. Like he's in and around the box a lot of times but when he does get in there he's deadly but he does really well linking quickly with other players in that sort of number 10 role okay now translating that into what Manchester United does Manchester United has Bruno Fernandes who, who plays that kind of role super super well so I've been sitting there thinking and looking at Manchester United's side and the ridiculous squad of players they have and I have come up with a and a starting 11 that I think is exceedingly unique and could be a system that could be used, I think, very likely for when they're trying to break down a team in like the low block kind of setting, um, which a lot of teams are going to do to Manchester United in the Premier League. The, the, the low block has seen a rise in popularity, and Man United have really struggled breaking it down. Um, last year, there were quite a few games that were tied, points were dropped, that United, I mean, we've already dropped points this year from a team that, that hit us with a low block, and, you know, we, we really need to do better. And what's interesting to me is you have two of the best headers of the ball currently playing in world football in Edison Cavani and Ronaldo. Cavani is a brilliant header of the ball, and he reads the ball really, really well, and you've got both those guys in the box. They could end up taking up the same space. But as I watch the way Cavani plays and I watch the way Ronaldo plays, they play differently. Ronaldo is a more all-around kind of player. Cavani is a more traditional kind of number nine. Um, 
Ronaldo is the much more complete player. So they do take up different positions naturally. Cavani gets into the box more than Ronaldo does. Ronaldo sits back a little bit and picks his moments. So I think what I think would be a really unique and very brilliant system for Manchester United is a 4-4-2 uh, against these low block teams. Now hear me out on this. But it's a 4-4-2 with De Gea and goal, world class De Gea. It's De Gea. I love Henderson, great guy. Love that he came through. It's De Gea. De Gea is the best goalkeeper on that squad. He's proved it countless times. De Gea is in the top five best goalkeepers in the world. De Gea needs to start in goal with Manchester United. I, you know, say what you will. Henderson's not in the top five. Henderson's not in the top ten. Henderson is maybe in the top fifteen, but he's not in the top 10 and he's not in the top five and he's certainly not in the top three. De Gea is in the top five comfortably. He's easily in the top 10, no arguments there. Um, I don't think he's in the top three, but I could see somebody making a case about it. You know, his performances don't really back up. The point is De Gea is a goal. I um, mean, you know, you got Varane and you've got Maguire and you've got Luke Shaw and you've got Juan Bissaka. That, that back five is solid, it's stable. There's a lot of ability to move the ball around. Um, it's defensively sound. It's 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 a great setup. So you, you've got a base of your, your your back five there that I think is really really strong. And then you move into the midfield, and this is where Manchester United have struggled to figure it out. But I'm, I'm talking about a four four two. It's it's a traditional Manchester United like 2007 2008 four four two, and in the in the midfield role is Nemanja Matic in the Michael Carrick slash Skulls kind of mold, where he's a ball player, a deep lying guy, and he sits in the skulls -y kind of position. And then next to him, in the carrick -y kind of box-to-box, -box, playmaker, move the ball around sort of role, in the Carrick kind of mold, is Donny van der Beek. And so you've got Donny van der Beek, who's a box-to-box -box kind of deep line playmaker who can push forward if he needs to in that role. Matic in the Skulls distribution kind of position. He's also, he will sit a little bit further back, I think, a lot of times, but he will play that deep line playmaker. You've got a technical player that's fast and quick and very deeply intelligent on the ball. When those two were paired against Everton, United looked really brilliant in the first half. And I think Matic and, and Van de Beek equal a brilliant pairing. So I think you put Matic and Van der Beek in a pivot sort of in the middle. And then you're moving forward. So you've got, you know, your, your band of five and then your two. And then you've got two wing players and you've got two forwards. The two forwards are Cavani and Ronaldo. Play them together. Ronaldo will naturally sit into that 10 role just a little bit and link up with the likes of Van der Beek, uh, Van der Beek and Cavani. And uh, also put Bruno Fernandez wide right. Now, okay, automatically you're like, why would you put, you know, 442 doesn't allow for a 10? Well, it does if there's fluidity in the system because a lot of the, on paper, these things are there, but the way that would work is you've got Bruno Fernandez sitting inside, which allows Ronaldo to go this way, which Ronaldo's overlap with Ron Bissaka. It allows, you know, maybe, you know, Ronaldo to jump in, Cavani to come back. He's good in possession, overlapping from Shaw, who provides width. And then you've got guys like Matic who can cover, and on the other side, Vander Beek who can cover. It, it's a it's a very fluid system up there. And then on the left, and this is where I think things get really fascinating. On the left, you put Paul Pogba. So your your four four two, your attacking players in the four four two, your midfield is Paul Pogba, Matic, Vander Beek, and uh, um, and Bruno Fernandez. That's your midfield four. And then your attacking two is Cavani. And Ronaldo. That's a very fascinating formation, and I, I think that it creates a lot of problems for teams to figure out how to deal with it. Because if you push the ball out wide, you've got one of the best playmakers in world football right now in Bruno Fernandez out wide right. You push it out wide left, you've got one of the best footballers in world football in, in Paul Pogba in a wider position to play and create from there. There's balance in that system. There's the ability for Van der Beek to sit into that number 10 and interact with Ronaldo and play off of Ronaldo, Bruno, and Pogba. You've got a guy like Cavani that can dart in and create problems inside the box or Ronaldo. To me, 
I think United could run a 4-4-2, a flat 4-4-2, and dominate the Premier League like old school. Because to me, the, the technical, and that's, that, and if you wanted to switch things up and come at you from a different perspective, you bring a Sancho on, you know, and you flip to a 4-2-3-1. You know, or you you know you, you bring a Rashford on, or a Martial on, you know, or you bring Lingard into one of those positions because Lingard has played very very well, and Lingard can naturally sit in and play one of those spots very easily and comfortably in a system like that, and with a slight tweak. So now let's say you bring Cavani off and you bring Lingard on, and now you put Lingard in that number ten spot, and he's a one touch passer kind of guy who moves the ball quickly and is aggressive cutting of the lines. You bring Lingard in for Cavani, and now you've got Ronaldo up front. You've got Lingard, Van der Beek, Bruno, Pogba, and Matic all playing together. You know, and if Matic isn't healthy, then you put uh, McTominay in Matic's role, and you maybe would then substitute Fred in to provide a little bit more defensive stability, because really Fred does have a lot of defensive stability and plays that position. You know. They're a good pivot, the two of them, when you're playing against a team that isn't in a low block, like one of the better teams, because they're disruptive for teams in possession. But when you when you start to look at how you could line up your team, uh, it, it, it really, honestly, it, 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 it suddenly creates a whole other dynamic that I think United haven't really exploited. And it's exciting to see what they could do. And, you know, you've also got Greenwood. And how would the 442 work with Greenwood? Well, uh, you could accommodate. I think the ideal for me is Matic and Pugba together in a pivot in the middle. Um, because I think there you've got stability and you've got movement and you've got Matic who can slip and cover. I think Pugba does better up for, you know, in that wide position. But if you put Pugba and Matic together and then on the wings, you put Rashford and you put Sancho, and then in the middle you put Bruno, and up, at, up top you put um, Ronaldo, uh, but you can also flip those things around. There's just so much versatility in this squad, but I think that the 4-4-2 uh, with Van der Beek and Matic and Ronaldo and Cavani with Pogba and Bruno on the wings, I think is the way Manchester United should line up to take on the teams that come at you from a deep position. And then I think you start the game like that. And I think you see if you can't get yourself a goal, you can wear teams down, you can come at them. If you are up a couple goals, you can switch some things around. If you are still chasing the game, I think you can bring off, um, you can very easily bring off Cavani and bring on Greenwood. Um, and, and, and you can shift your system around a little bit. You can bring off a Van der Beek and bring on somebody else. Um, you could bring bring out a, a Matic and bring on somebody else, and you could flip Pugba back into that pivot and pull Matic out. Um, and then you can bring somebody else in, like a Rashford, and then move things around that way, um, or a Greenwood at that point, or even a Sancho. For me, Manchester United have an embarrassment of talent up front and I think that they have a really solid defense and I'm very excited to see how Solskjaer uses and utilizes that system uh, and I think that really at this point he's got so many options and the ability to change him his lineup so completely that I think Manchester United are, are primed right now to go go out and win the league um, I, I think right now Manchester United are the favorites and I say that because of the mentality of Ronaldo and I think of the way he plays. You know, it is my prediction that Manchester United is going to win two trophies this year. I predicted that before Ronaldo came in. But I think United are going to win two trophies this year. I don't know what they're going to be, but I think they're going to win two of them. Um, and I think this is going to be a return to glory for Manchester United. And I think that we're also going to see the rise of players like Greenwood. We're already seeing it, but I think we're going to see it in a massive way. So, very excited to see what Manchester United does. Very excited to see how this team lines up. Very excited to watch them play. It's fun to be excited about Manchester United again.